Uh, let's uh, let's get started. Uh, the first thing that I'd like to uh, just cover very briefly: uh, how does uh, transfer pricing rules? How do we deal with them when we have disregarded entities? The obvious uh, example uh, is if we uh, if we have, let's say, a U.S. parent and it has two subsidiaries and let's say there's a transaction uh, between them uh, and we'll assume that both of these uh, are disregarded entities of the U.S. company. It really doesn't matter. Uh, can a U.S. subsidiary be a disregarded entity? Sure. Uh, can a foreign entity be a disregarded entity? The important thing is not, in a sense, the location of establishment of the entity which is to be disregarded, the important point is what is the status of the owner of the disregarded entity? In this case, it happens to be a U.S. parent. We could make it, in this example, of a foreign company. doesn't matter. Parent company, you say U.S. or foreign. Why would it matter if on the top was a foreign company? For US? Huh. Okay, good. Let's... Uh, let's Let's assume that, that this is not a U.S. company, but it's a foreign company. And let's assume that this one here is a U.S. company. So you're, it's important just because of the income generated? Well, it's, it's not so much the source of the income. It's just, it's, it's more basic than that. You know, whenever uh, whenever we look at any sort of a tax situation, we have to ask the first question, who's the taxpayer? Who's the taxpayer? If there were no disregarded entity, the taxpayer would be the U.S. company. It is the taxpayer. If that entity is because of a disregarded uh, entity election uh, entity under the entity classification rules, then the taxpayer becomes the owner, which in your example here is the foreign parent. So it's just, it it's, doesn't even get to a question, gee, what's the source of the income? It's just the basic question of who is the taxpayer? Does that uh, get to... Uh, yeah, I mean, for... What you're talking about is maybe the foreign company just having a U.S. brand. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if uh, if the U.S. company is disregarded, yeah, the foreign company has a U.S. branch, and all the things that you learned in T five fifteen, the inbound course, apply. Okay, now let's again pretend that both of these. Uh, subsidiaries, again, whether they're U.S. or foreign, are disregarded entities and are considered as owned by the parent. The question was 482. If there's a transaction between the two of them, do we care about Section 482 in the United States? Okay, so you got the right answer, but you're not sure how you got there. Well, it's an intercompany transaction, right, but but why, why uh, uh, Marissa, why is Marissa right, though, that we don't care? Uh, Jennifer? Like consolidated return in the sense of the transaction between the two people are going to be ignored. Okay, you're absolutely right. I will, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I, the only thing I will, uh, I will, let's say suggest is that you don't use the word consolidated because in the tax area, you know, we think about consolidated tax returns. We think about specific code and regulation sections. And so what is it? Is there a word for that? Uh, yeah. 
if the two are disregarded under the entity classification rules, the owner is the foreign, well, or U.S., whatever it is, the parent. That is the company which owns, and just simply because, you know, you keep seeing me take, uh, you know, the money from one pocket and putting it in another pocket, uh, there's no transaction. It's, it, you're, you're right, uh, the concept of consolidation is right, but I am just saying don't use the word. Yes. Um, so my question is, if um, there is a transaction between them and the money does change, the $20 goes from pocket A to pocket B and up to the U.S. parent. Well, you, now you're, you're saying it goes, the, let's say 20 of excess value went from here yes. to here. Yes. Okay. Okay, so someone sold something, someone bought something, there was a transaction between the two. Isn't that what you were describing? Right. Okay, there's a transaction between the two. And so someone's profiting. More than they should based on good transfer pricing principles. Let's, okay, someone's profiting and it's going up to the parent. So either way it's going up to the parent. Is that what you're trying to say? No, I am not saying that it necessarily goes up there. Again, this gets back to this uh, this difficulty of the non-intuitive disregarded entity. For U.S. purposes, there's been no transaction because, again, it's money going between pockets. But if this is a U.S. company and there's another branch, and there's that other company which we're saying is like a branch of the foreign company. If that uh, that's incorporated, you know, in country A, well, country A, that's not a disregarded entity for country A purposes. So country A is going to apply its transfer pricing rules because most countries do now have transfer pricing rules. So. Uh, the U.S. might say that there's no transaction, and as a result of there being no transaction, uh, maybe the U.S. doesn't recognize that 20 of extra uh, value that went out, and as a result, uh, there will be higher income within the U.S. Uh, yes? So to clarify, if you asked initially, like, do we care about 482? And that's a different question than does 482 apply. So does 482 apply to the net effect is nothing in this situation? So it's kind of, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, the end result the same. Well, actually, because of the situation that uh, Lunil created, uh, uh, it gets actually a little bit, uh, a little bit stranger. Uh, the, the usual situation is that a transaction which is real in other words, there's actual agreements and transfer of money or and performance of services or you know something. There's an actual transaction. That transaction is ignored, and as a result, from a 482 standpoint, we say there's no transaction. You know, we don't have an issue from a U.S. standpoint. In this case that Lunil has created, and uh, you know, that's a feather in your cap, so to speak. If we have a U.S. company here, which is a disregarded entity, and it actually has an operating business, how do we determine, and again, this gets back to your T515, how do we determine what the effectively connected income of that, that U.S. branch is? The principles of Section 482 often apply in how you figure out what the effectively connected income is. So 482 may be involved, so to speak, but technically it's not 482. The principles get into the picture, but not 482 itself. So you're a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs>